Hey guys, Josh here from O4 Technologies. Uh, just want to let you know I have not forgot about you, and I've been working quite a bit over the summer to get the Howler controller up and running to how you guys would like. So what I've done is I've added a few new functions. I've added the shift functionality that a lot of guys are asking for. So what that does is basically you can set a key to a shift key, and then every other key has a secondary function. So if you press and hold that key and press the other keys, it will do it the secondary function for that, so I'll show you that a bit later. I've also added the ability to save controls, load controls, save LEDs, load LEDs, which is very useful because it's a pain in the butt putting them in it all individually, so now you can just load a file and you can edit a plain text file as well to have your controls uh, imported or exported. And the same thing with LEDs. I've also added in um, much improved trackball and spinner functionality that you can basically modify to suit your needs. I'll show you that in a bit as well. So first thing I want to show you is the shift functionality. So as you can see, uh, this is the Howler controller, the primary functions for it, which is pretty much the same as all the Howlers have been before. So if you look down the bottom right here, the primary and shift controls can be changed with these radio buttons. So the primary controls are set right here. And the shifted controls look like this. So I basically set all the shifted controls to keyboard controls. Primary is primary and shifted are keyboard controls. So by default, when you load the new firmware, you're going to have to load new firmware version 0.255. It's a beta version because there may be a few bugs, but just wanted to get this out so you can guys can test it out. So once you load that new guy on there, you'll be able to change your controls and your shift button. So right, I'll set the shift function to button 10. So set that. So now it's set to button 10. And if you look under the keyboard controls, so I'll just press the keys without any shift keys. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Press button 10. You can see it's pressed. And when I press 1, 2, 3, nothing happens. Or does it? So let's look under in a notepad here. So. I press the buttons, nothing happens. I hold down shift, which is button 10. There we go, key functionality. So hopefully you guys are happy with the shift functionality. And again, any bugs you find in this beta version, please let me know as soon as you can and I'll address them right away. And also if you, sh if you click on all of these, now there's a shifted type for every single button. And in order to view them on the GUI, you can do that. So that's a cool thing too. And then another really good thing that you guys were asking for is to, the ability to load and save controls. So in order to load controls, you just click the load controls button. And once you do this, it will overwrite all existing controls. So make sure that you've saved it from a unknown state and a good file. So I'll go yes. So I'm going to, I have two howlers set up, so I'm going to set them to howler number one, open it up. So it automatically sets them as soon as you click open it. So this is how it's set for my Howler number one. So as you can see, my trackball is working fine, and I have my um, joystick one set up as down, up, right, and left. So that's a really interesting thing you guys are looking for. And save controls, you just click save controls, put a file name, so test one, save it, and there you go. It saves it to a file for you. So the file format for the controls file looks like this. So any line with two slashes, kind of like in C, gives you a comment file. So I just put that, it's the Howard controllers file, the config version is 0.09b, 0.9b, the DLL version, firmware version of the board you're using, and then this is where the meat is. So basically, when you save the file, it auto generate it generates this and, and saves it whatever you saved it as. So the first time you want, you do this, you want to basically save a file. So then it generates this, and you can just come in here and edit it. But first thing you want to do is just save your file first. So if you go through here, it has all the joysticks, all the buttons, and that's pretty self-explanatory. And then at the very bottom, it saves what the shift button is. And then these QDEC are quadrature decoders. So these are basically values saved for the trackball and um, spinner functionality, which I will show you later. So the same thing goes for LEDs. So now the LEDs, you can save and load the defaults for those as well. So let's load some default LEDs here. Yeah. So let's load in test two, open it up. So 
and then it sets the LEDs, the default LEDs, which means that when you remove power from the Howler and plug power back in again, this will be the default values for them. Of course, once you run LED Blinky, it'll change them all, but once you turn off power and turn on again, this will be the default configuration. And you can save default, low default, same. So the what the file looks like for the LEDs is pretty much very, very similar. So Howler LEDs file, and then it gives you config version that you use and DLL version, board version, and then just goes joy 1, joy 2, all the way but 1 to button um, 26 and the high power ones, and then you just basically set the colors. So once you save it, it auto-generates this file, and then you can go in and edit the file as well. And the third thing I'd like to show you is the advanced stuff. So basically under advanced, this is where you can set the spinner and trackball parameters. So for most spinball, spinner and in trackballs, I found that these values are the best to set. So low cutoff is basically like the lowest value that it will register, and the high cutoff is the highest value that it will register, and then the scalar is a percentage. So if you want it more sensitive, you put this number higher. If you want it less sensitive, you put it lower. So 25 is a very good value to have. So 25% of the full functionality for like a hap trackball. I'm using the Groovy Game Gear one, which is basically a hap trackball, and I find that works very well. And for my spinner, it's on controller number two, which I still have the old, or I got to load controls for that one. So let's load in controller two config, open it up. Do, 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 do. And as you can see, this is the set of my spinner now. So as you see my spinner is nice and smooth now. And my spinner, the high cutoff, it's a very sensitive one, it's a groovy game gear one. So you want to set your scaler a little lower than 25. I set it for 20%. And then my high cutoff, I set for 150 because if you want to go really quickly, if you set it too low, it'll just stick. So watch, see if I set it to like 70. As you can see, it sticks there because it's it's not high enough cut off for it. So set it back to 150, set. Now it works perfectly smooth. So what you guys are going to need to do is you're going to have to follow the video directions for upgrading the firmware. I will put the firmware versions on the website. And again, if you have more than one Howler controller, you're going to have to program one with the um, product ID uh, 6800 and then the next one was 6801, next one 6802, 6803. So if you have multiple howlers you want to program them each with a different number. So first thing you do is program your howler controller. Sorry, the first thing you want to do actually is probably save your config. So this program should work with previous versions. So run the new 0.9b version of the howler config program and save your controls first. So save those to a control file and then once those are saved, upgrade the firmware on your Howler, and then come back in here and then load the controls back onto it. And then you're able to change the shift control. You're able to make your shifted in primary, change the shift in primary controls. One caveat too is what the button you choose, only the primary function is going to work for it. So if it's a shift key. So this one, even if you set this um, shifted type to something else, only the shift, the primary value will work for it because that's the way it only can work. Because if you press shift, you don't want it to keep toggling between shifted mode and normal mode. One other caveat is for any device that has a keyboard input. So let's look at our shifted ones here. You you have to have everyone has to have a different value for the keyboard press. Otherwise, it'll just count. Like if you try to press another key that has the same one, it will not work. So if this was number two and this was number two, only button three would work. This one would not work. So you have to have a different um, key value for every single one of the ones on here. So uh, I guess that wraps it up for Howler, for the new version of Howler config and the new Howler firmware. So if anybody has any questions, feel free to email me, josh.wolf at wolfwaretech.com. And I'm open to any questions. And as soon as you find any bugs at all, I'm sure there may be a few. I've tried to, my best to, to crush as much as I can. But just get back to me and let me know as soon as you can. All right. Thanks, guys. And thanks a lot for your support so far.